I'm outside Westminster Kingsway College. I'm about to go in and meet Jose Suto for one of his game lectures and seminars. So let's look at the first one we've got here, physics. So basically physics, the season of physics starts 1st of October through to the uh, 1st of February. Okay, two different types, we've got physics, we've got male and female. So this is the male and this is the female. Right, male is bigger and more colorful. Um, a lot of them basically have a lot of these gray um, colors on the back. There are really different colors of pheasants that we get now. See, that one there hasn't got as much gray on the feathers, it's just more on its back. And this has got more on its feathers than its back. Um, and then there's other ones that are basically sort of much tighter color. It's just different, slight different subspecies of pheasant. Pheasant is an oriental bird. It was really funny, a few years back, right, when we were doing recipes for pheasant, and we started doing some, yeah, you know, spicy curries and stuff like that, and everyone thought, ooh, it's revolutionary. Mm. It's not, because it's an Asian bird. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, it works really well with all those flavours anyway. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's become very traditional in the UK. I mean, you know, what Christmas card, what Christmas can you not go without getting a Christmas card with pheasant on it? Yeah, it's become part of our countryside, right? And we look at it as an indigenous bird now, but it's not. Yeah, there's no way it's an indigenous bird. Now, while I talk about pheasants, uh, I'll talk a little bit about hanging uh, on pheasants. Now, there are two different ways in which we hang pheasants. The old way, right, which I'm going to show you, which is basically you're taking a piece, I've got a piece of butcher string here, and we tie a little knot to the end. And this is normally done there, farmers do it with baleen twine. Um, and you wrap it around there, and we hang them by the back feet. Okay? And normally, basically, you just open the feathers out and do it like that. Now there's a reason why in the old days you'd hang on that. And if you think about it, if you've ever seen any black and white um, artist drawings right, or paintings basically from sort of like Victorian Georgian ages and stuff like that, you will see pheasants or even chickens hanging in the larder like that, yeah, that way around. Whereas nowadays, what we tend to see a lot of, right, when we see pheasants hanging, is pheasants hung like this, yeah, from the neck. And why? Well, there's a reason. In the old days, yeah, they didn't have fridges, they didn't have refrigeration like we have. What they had was stone buildings as uh, game larders, and these stone buildings would have basically uh, windows which would allow air to basically, with a mesh through, would allow air to go through it, keeping the larders very, very cold. Okay, so the birds were basically kept alive. Now, because of that, the birds were hung like this, upside down, and it was considered that the, this, the bird itself the legs had a strong enough flavour for a bit. So, if anything, what we wanted to do is basically give flavour to the breast. And by hanging the birds upside down, the gut would drop here into basically behind where the breast is. And as the gut basically was allowed to mature a little, yeah, it would begin to flavour and, and give flavour to the actual breast. Now, and also what happened is basically, because the wings were open, it allowed airflow right around the body. Nowadays, we've got refrigeration. Don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about airflow or anything. Right? We can handle like this and get more birds into a, a fridge. And also, as we went on, people sort of said, well, you know what? The best part of the bird is the breast. We don't want too much flavour into the breast. But, uh, the legs, we're not that worried about. So if we have them this way, the gut will fall between the leg. Yeah, and that means it'll be away from the breast. It'll give a little bit of flavour to the breast, but it'll be away from the main and the premium part of the animal. If you like, it's like the, the loin on a, on a deer, yeah, or the, the filling of beef, right? It's away from this is the best part, so we'll keep it away from that. And that's why they were hung this way. So that's the difference between the two. Now, <coughs> hanging, people say, well, you look at hanging, right? And people talk about, well, how long do you hang a bird for? Um, in the old days, you say, oh, the old gamekeepers would turn around and say, well, you hang them until the nuts drop out of their eyes, right? And stuff like that. But the reason that people used to hang game for a long time in the old days is because Back in sort of the Georgian times and Victorian times before, we did not have the spices, the salts, the peppers, all that sort of stuff. That was really expensive stuff. Like we didn't have it. It was all sort of like you know mystical stuff that came from the Far East. Yeah, pepper, you know, all those sorts of things. So what happened is because we didn't have any of that, we preferred our meat and our, uh, our game to have a stronger flavour because we couldn't impart a flavour onto them. Okay. So if you consider this historically as food, if you were to look at any of the uh, dishes for things like um, cutlet reform, yeah, which is basically a lamb cutlet, yeah. Now cutlet reform, right, we talk about cutlet 
form. We talk about lamb cutlet, then you pan a, and then you pan fry, and you serve it with reformed sauce. Well, back in the day when cutlet reform was basically, you know, was at its heyday, it wasn't lamb, yeah, it was mutton. And the reason it wasn't lamb is because back then the actual wool on the lamb was cost more money than the meat of the lamb. In actual fact, if you went to the House of Commons or you went to Buckingham Palace, right, and that and wool was so expensive, yeah, that to show how much power the Speaker of the House of Commons had, or how much power the King or the Queen had, and they had a sack full of wool and they sat on it. Yeah, that's how that's how basically powerful they were. They could sit on a sack of wool because it was such an expensive commodity. Why? Because we didn't have any synthetics to make clothes. Leather, wool, all that sort of stuff was basically used for making clothing, so it was a really expensive commodity. So we would always take a, a, um, a sheep to allow us to harvest the wool before we'd even think about killing it. Yeah? And it would harvest the wool for two or three years, and then we'd harvest it, so then the, the meat has a much stronger flavour. With pork, yeah, with pigs, there's no way you would kill a pig in its first year. You'd basically breed the bloody thing and basically have more piglets before you kill it. Yeah? So the, the pigs themselves had what's called a boorish flavour which was a stronger flavour. So if, if we think about all of that historically with food, how food worked, then that's why people used to hang game. Because they considered the actual flavour of game as itself to be quite bland. Yeah. Now they don't. Now they fresh, fresh, yeah, basically get them, yeah, give them a day or two to basically relax and then start using them. Yeah, they've got a great flavour, right? Because we've got seasonings, we've got basically stuff that we do. Fusion foods, right? I mean, the, the UK is the capital of the world of fusion foods. We love taking basically bits and pieces from other people, yeah, and putting them together with our food. We absolutely love all doing that, all that sort of thing. But before we couldn't have that. So <clears throat> nowadays, basically, we tend to hang pheasants. What happens with pheasants is that, and with all game birds on the shoots, is that the birds are shot. There's normally like a little buggy or something that's basically collecting pheasants up or the, the birds, and they're put in a single row. In, uh, in trains, which are aerated, yes, yeah, so they've got holes in them, or they're hung on the back of a cart, yes, yeah, so they're hung so they're not piled on top of each other. They're then one buggy will go back to the larder, hang all the birds up in the larder, or put the, the trays into the larder. The larder will basically come down to about three degrees. Meanwhile, another buggy's going to the next drive, yeah, to pick up those birds, and the other drive, and they go down like that, yeah, so all the birds are going and getting chilled really quickly. Once the birds get chilled, yeah, um, the game dealers will come to pick them up. Yeah, they'll pick them up and they take them in refrigerated vans back to the, 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 the game dealers to process them. Now, in the processes, what happens is they have a, a, what's called a chill line that they have to maintain at two degrees. So, what they do is all the pheasants go into an intake fridge and they're brought down to two degrees. Okay, so four degrees to two degrees. And they're held to once they're at two degrees, they have a sorting table where there are about three or four guys and they, they look at the pheasants, the partridge, whatever it is, and they look to make sure the wings are all in place, yeah, that there's no broken wings, broken legs. And it's got broken wing, broken legs, or any broken goes to one side, they're processed later. All the birds that are whole, yeah, in good condition, they go for processing straight away. So what happens is they go through, they're hung up on the line as they go through. The guys basically put them onto a plucking machine, which a plucking machine is a disc, and it has lots of little V shapes in the disc because it goes and it spins round. So as you put a bird onto it, the discs basically sort of pinch the feather off, yeah, it pulls all the feathers off. So they take the majority of the feathers off, they cut the wings off, yeah, and they take the majority of all of the feathers off the bird. But then it goes, get hung up again, and it goes through into the next room. Into the next room, there is molten wax. Yeah? And the birds basically, on the, the line as they're moving through the conveyor belt, they go into the molten wax, and then they come out of the molten wax on the other side. And then either what they'll either then go into a cold water bath, or they go into basically what's called a cold room. So it's just a room that's really, really cold as the line goes through, the automatic line goes through, and it just chills them down. Then it comes out the other side, yeah, the guys grab hold of it, and they go, <coughs> and pull it off. Ladies, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Why is it the Yes, it's exactly the same, yeah? And it removes all of the small particles of feathers while it's giving them a lovely, clean uh, carcass on it. Then they go through from there to another area where the evisceration takes place, they take out all the guts, Basically, crops get taken out, heads get taken off, and all that sort of stuff, and then they're mostly processed. Now, going back to when we talked about cooking, undercooking game. One of the reasons that we can undercook game is because the birds are waxed. Okay, you cannot with chickens. Normally, what happens with chickens? Chickens are killed. They come into the factory. Instead of going in through wax, what they do is they go through basically uh, water. 
Yeah, so there's basically uh, a water bath they go through, it soaks all the feathers, okay, and then they go through like a tumbler. Yeah, the tumblers them, or they've got these great big uh, rollers that've got like big rubber fingers that interlock. And what they do is they spin round, and as the birds go through, the feathers get caught on them and they pull the feathers off. Okay, now. Once it goes through there, then they get eviscerated and they go through the other side. Now, when a bird's killed, it's still warm, <clears throat> as it goes into a water bath, there's a chance of basically a bird defecating in the water. That's why you are told in poultry to cook it well, because there's a chance of contamination from um, Campylobacter, yeah, and uh, Salmonella. Salmonella is in the gut, yeah, if the gut comes into contact with the outside of the bird, and Campylobacter is in feces. So if the bird defecates in the water, all these birds are going through the water, yeah? So once you cook it, it kills the bacteria. There's no problem with it. These guys don't go through water. They can't go through water, because they've got holes in them, yeah? And if they basically went through water, the, well, the actual water would go into the bird, okay? So they can't go through the holes. And also, one day you'll be doing pheasants, another day you'll be doing ducks. And with the ducks, right, if you basically, if they were going through the uh, through the uh, water, they'd all do that like that, yeah? They'd just float on top and go <laughs> away. Right, unless you gave them a real good soaking. Right? So they're basically everything's waxed. So because of that, that means that there's no there's no chance of a Campylobacter um, contamination based on the bird. So you can that's why we can undercook game, where we can basically it's very, very different to basically anything with, with poultry, any other mass produced poultry. Yeah, and that sort of way of cooking. So like I said, nowadays we don't hand game. All the processes that basically do it don't hand game. You might have a few people that might hand game individually for restaurants and stuff like that, but really, I've tasted hung and unhung game. There's no benefit to hanging it, I don't think. Right? Now, there's refrigeration. <coughs> the temperatures go down so low in refrigerators that basically, if you try and hang it and game the in a refrigerator, you don't get the same effect. Because if you're sort of thinking about it, basically, if you were hanging game, you'd be hanging game at around about sort of six or seven degrees, which is around about this time of year is what we should be getting. We're not getting it now, we're getting 10 degrees now, but six or seven degrees, and therefore multiplication of bacteria would be much faster, much more accelerated. So it means that the gut would basically decompose quicker, yeah, and the enzymes and the gases within the gut would flavor the animal more. All right, so there's a big difference between what was back then and now. So, and now that people, people's ways of thinking about game and food and all that sort of stuff has changed. I, I, <clears throat> I'm a falcon, so I fly birds of prey, and I basically hunt with these birds, and I go out to Scotland every year, most years, I've been out for a few years actually. And when I go out to Scotland, <coughs> the guys that I used to go out to Scotland with, it was a bus and toilet thing, I have to cook, right, every time I go out there. And what I do is basically, the first day that we go out there, the birds that we catch on the first day, we would leave them, and we'd let them basically set. And that's because within a bird's uh, body, in the actual pectoral muscles, so the muscles that are here, in the breast muscles, underneath that, there is a tiny little fillet. Okay, you've also seen the chicken, haven't you? A little fillet in the chicken. Now in that, in that chicken fillet, there's a little bit of white sinew that runs through the middle of the fillet of the chicken. In a chicken fillet, we don't even notice it. In a pheasant and any of the game birds, you notice it. It's a very tough, sinewy fillet, uh, sinew. And the reason that's there <coughs> is because that fillet maintains adrenaline. So it's a chemical that basically is held within the body. And what it does, that chemical does, is it basically when the bird's frightened, that little muscle injects adrenaline into the big pectoral muscle here and allows the bird to get fly really quickly away. Right, it gives it the power of a quick burst to fly. Okay, in chickens, they don't need it anymore, so it doesn't work, right? It doesn't do anything, yeah. But in pheasants, it does. Now, when the bird pheasants face fly away, you shot it, or you caught it, or done whatever you did with it, then that adrenaline is coursing throughout the body, it can take the flavour of the actual meat if you eat it straight away. Yeah, and also what will happen is you know what happens, an animal dies a few sort of about half an hour later, it's as stiff as a board. Yeah, and that's that's uh, rigor mortis. So rigor mortis must set in and then rigor mortis subsides a little while later as all the muscles relax. And that's when it's ready to eat, after it's relaxed. Okay. <coughs> Small animals like this that happens quite quickly, larger animals it takes a little bit longer. Okay. <coughs> so when we're up there, we give them that day just to relax. And that's normally what I'll do with game is I'll give it a refrigerated basically for about a day or two, then I'll prepare it as to what have I'm gonna basically serve it at home. Sometimes what I'll do is basically, once you've allowed them to relax, I'll even basically put them into the freezer with the feathers on because that protects it really well, basically. And if you wrap it up nicely or um, uh, put it into a bag or something, it protects it well. Obviously at work, we can't do that, yeah? If you are preparing game birds, you need to have a separate kitchen to prepare game birds in. 
yeah, and even with them. So for us, that's our deal ladder. Yeah, all our game, basically, uh, all our feathered game and deer go into that ladder, and then basically we prepare everything up here, and then we take it as meat down to the kitchen. So you keep the dirty away from the thing. Now, when, one year when I was when we were out in Scotland, right, I didn't go with the guys. The guys went by themselves, and they decided that they were going to basically try and cook game classically. So they read an old book, and they read basically they needed to hang it, and then they read basically they were going to try and do all the preparation and then they're going to look for a good recipe. So the hanging basically was three days hanging. Now it was sort of October. So in October we were getting really warm temperatures. So if you imagine basically three days hanging for a pheasant outside in basically 15 degrees, yeah, not good. Yeah. And by the time they basically got the pheasants and they put them into a plastic bag, and they went down to see the, the local uh, pub that also did lots of game. And they said to him like, you know, can you prepare these for us for, for your recipe? sloshing in the bag right, as he was showing it to him right, smell was coming out and he said look I haven't got any recipes for this he said they said well where can we get a good recipe he said the game keep over there he said he's a young guy he said they basically he's got loads of great new recipes a bit of a foodie but he really understands the game now he said don't ask him so he went over to the guy and he basically showed him the pheasants and the guy went yeah, yeah I'll get you a recipe he said get a book I get, get a bit of paper he said no I'll, I'll get you a recipe so he went and got a bit of paper and all three of them said he said hey come on in he said yeah well, get some onions he said yeah peel the onions he said we keep them whole he said to one side so peel some carrots keep them whole to one side celery peel them to one side and he went through this whole long list of vegetables and he got to the end right, and he said to them right you want to take the pheasants and they all lean forward while right, waiting for them to tell them what to do with the pheasants he went yeah he said throw them in the bin drink so he said that's all they're good for <laughs> he said like, when they've got to that stage you cannot do anything with them right the decomposure of those birds has already started right and it's gone too far and all you're going to do is poison yourself back then we had a better resistance to that sort of stuff than we have now right so really we want to be eating game fresh we want to be pairing them with basically fresh flavors that we have nowadays and the stuff that they didn't have to go through so <clears throat> let's move on so uh, weight wise basically on these uh, cocks about 1.5 kilos hens about 1.2 kilos Depends on where you are in the country. If you go to Cambridgeshire, open ground, no woodland, the cots are smaller, right? They're about 1.2 and the hens are about a pound. They're all, a kilo, sorry. Uh, and that's because basically no woodland, the, the birds have basically sort of like grown to, to adapt to living in open areas. Whereas in woodland, the birds tend to be a lot more bigger. Characteristics of basic pheasants, so you've got like long chipping like legs with a grey colour. The males have spurs, and you can see the spurs on this one. This is a very young pheasant, so it's got very small spurs. As they get older, they get longer. Yeah? And the females don't have any spurs, they're just basically smooth legs. And with all the main birds that we've got here, yeah, you'll find that they have, well, have some, the males have spurs and the females don't. <coughs> and feathers, big difference in basically colour, you know, from a rich chestnut, golden browns, green, you know, red mottling on the face for the males and to a pale mottled brown we have for the females. 